had to hold my own and it was very difficult for me to do so because I never had any previous experiences apart from my involvement in cybercrime. At the time when you did your masters, I mean, where did the boxing come into that? I mean, did you did you develop the discipline of studying on the masters from your discipline as a boxer or did they operate in two different worlds? I think they operated to a certain extent parallel. I think there's steps and procedures for everything. I've always said in life, there's levels and there's lane. You need to know um, what level you're on and you need to know your lane. So boxing, you know, I wasn't necessarily good at boxing. Um, but what I was good at was the fitness element of things, um, keeping myself in shape. Um, and, and it's the same with masters, you know, just like boxing for me, it's a process and it was a process that I needed to do effectively. So, you know, you've done the masters, you've had jobs, you've done all of this stuff. And then suddenly you wake up one day and say, I'm going to do a PhD. I mean, for people, for most people, you know, they, they can't comprehend that. That's way beyond. So people's thought processes so the thing i i'm again i'm intrigued in is the transition from doing a master's to where you're having to read be intense and then suddenly you get up and say well i'm going to do a phd i mean yes where did that come from i think the phd came about after my master's i did one year of um visiting lecturing for Birmingham university Birmingham university i'm employed now there as a lecturer in criminology um, but when I was a VL between 2013 to th- 2014, I got a better understanding, an academic understanding of criminology, and I was approached by the professors there to consider a PhD, and they wanted me to do one straight away, but I said to them, no, I need some time in order to reflect, in order to evaluate and see um, what uh, if I can do this, and more importantly, what I bring to the table. It was about my unique selling point. What What was it that I could bring? to a PhD that would make my PhD novel, rich, empirical research. But in terms of, you know, because you've mentioned the word reflection quite a few times, yes. where does that come from? I mean, where does your capacity to reflect and process and where does that come from? I think as humans, we don't, we don't tend to reflect because when we do reflect, we think about the times that we've been oppressed or repressed or, or we think about negative experiences. But I've been reflecting from a very young age but where did, where did that come from um, i think i think it came from i think it came from a fusion i think it came from my parents who would always tell me to always reflect on so say for example if i was ever involved in any um bad or deviant behavior and i was called in for it and it was you know it was a, it was a very bad experience my parents would always tell me you know reflect on what you've done and how are you going to go and improve yourself? It was the same thing in school when I used to be in trouble in school. The head teacher or the, or, or the head of year would always say, reflect on the time that you were involved in this fight and tell me how you're going to move on. So reflection came from a fusion of socialising experiences. And I think the most important thing for me was also my faith alongside this trajectory from you know um, school to uh, university education and PhD. Um, my faith of Islam. Um, I think Islam has kept me grounded um, just like my parents have. And I think Islam is pretty much the foundations and the structures of um, what I do. Let me ask you a, a kind of question that a lot of people want to ask but probably don't. Yes. Is that because Islam is very spiritual, it's very religiously driven, science is not. So how do you marry science and social science in particular with your Islamic faith? Because do they, do they clash? Is there a, you know, is, how do you marry the two? I think a lot of um, social scientists consider religion and social sciences to be separate and unrelated. However, I think otherwise. Um, I think there's certain things, if you look at the Quran properly, even in terms of medical science, things that are being discovered in the past 40, 50 years were written 1400 years ago in a holy book. You know, that's the scientific understanding. So, you know, there's, there's various references of embryology that scientists are just only discovering now that was spoken about 1,400 years ago. Same with social sciences. Criminality, for instance, is mentioned in the Quran um, in, 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 in various chapters, in various verses. So I just feel as though that there is actually a parallel as opposed to considering them separate and related. And that's probably one of the reasons as to why I want to, in the future, do some sort of a comparative study of uh, theology. Um, as well uh, and, crimin- and criminality. So let's say right now in Hansworth, Aston, Newtown, Nichols, um, there's another Mohammed, 14 years of age, angry, bitter, upset, struggling with stuff. And they're thinking, which way do I go? Do I go 
this way, the positive route, do I study? I mean, give us two or three things that you'd want to say to the to the kind of younger generation listening who are where you were at 10, 15 years ago. I think um, one of the things that I can say, the key thing is when it's all said and done, it's just going to be you. When it comes to adversities, trials and tribulations, you're going to be the person that's going to have to defend them. It's not going to be your boy, your gang member, your bedroom, your friend, your homie. He's not going to be there for you. Trust me. You know, a lot of people have this conception of, oh, if I roll with 10, 15 guys, 20 guys, you know, look at me, I'm the big man. But that kind of um, experience disappears quickly in your teenage years. It starts off as something that's very attractive, but it ends up becoming something that's pretty much redundant. So my advice would always be, be yourself at the end of the day. Don't feel as though that you need to be pressurised to be involved in some sort of, um, you know, criminal or deviant behaviour because I never needed to feel... I I, I was pressurised always, but I never needed to get myself involved in that kind of um, um, experiences. I just had to do the bare minimum in order to defend myself. Just finally, kind of in conclusion, um, I know that community is really important to you. Yeah. Um, Because the the whole show is constructed around what's going on in community, um, what have you identified as some of the core problems within the community that you feel that those of us with knowledge and wisdom could be doing better? I think community, um, if I'm honest with you, and this is by no means attack on parents, I think parents need to be more, more involved and have more of a vested interest in what's going on in their kids' lives. Um, I think that's an important thing. I think often you find pride, culture, honour gets in the way of things. I feel as though in this day and age, parents need to be really up to date with what their kids do, vice versa. I think that there needs to be a better communication. The structure's there, the communication, I feel as though, is not necessarily there, you know. Um, and I think in order for people to um, pretty much become um, less ignorant, more mindful, uh, more understanding, I think communication is key. I think we're starting to lose communication. I think technology is taking over. I think kids no longer speak to their parents. Um, you know, I'm not a dad. I'm not a parent, but what I do know is in the future, if there's one anything that I could do, one of the things that I could do in order to improve society community would be to advocate that. So when you think about the future, you, you know, we've now got Brexit, we've got Donald Trump, the world, you know, there's a lot of chaos going on. Yes. Uh, when you think about your future trajectory, your future journey, I mean, five years from now, where do you kind of see yourself being? Well... Currently, I'm a lecturer in criminology at Birmingham City University. Um, primarily, I teach criminology. I also teach sociology and psychology. Um, I do research. I'm a researcher, so I, t- I research gangs, organised crime, violent crimes. And I've also recently submitted my PhD uh, for review. I feel as though in the next five years, I'll probably still be in academia. Um, I'd like to be both teaching and doing research. Um, Regardless of professional trajectory, I feel as though anything that I do the next five years needs to be progressive, it needs to be innovative, and it needs to be helping others. I feel as though helping others is key as well. Too far, we, uh, too often we find people going up the ladder, so to speak, and take the ladder with them. So if there's anything that I want to do in the next five years is I want to acquire knowledge, impart it to the people, and just help others. Well, you know, Mo, we've kind of come to the end of the interview, so I, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, when you reflect on what Mo said, I mean, the interesting thing about Mo's journey, um, like a lot of us who grow up feeling disaffected, coming from backgrounds and communities and situations where we feel it's helpless or what's the point, one of the important things about looking at Mo's journey is that Mo started not in a privileged position. He started in a very uh, uncomfortable place, in a place full of loss and pain, but somehow his journey has turned it around. So to me, again, there's another valuable lesson in there about what the Roadman's Guide's about, that we need to learn from community, about community, by the community, for the community. So as we close, remember the six R's. It's important that we must read, write, research, recharge, rest. And number six, we need to remember. 
So until next time, stay safe, walk good, and bring light into the darkness. This is Doc Martin on the Roadman's Guide. Peace. Peace.